Now, in continuing with the radio path series, in a correlative series that we do on Dam Shri channel of YouTube, today we will discuss a very interesting entity which is which was formerly called as bronchoalveolar carcinoma. You know, at our time when I was doing my MBBS, we used to call it bronchoalveolar carcinoma. And I'll talk I'll talk about this tumor. Now, today the new name is adenocarcinoma in C2. Adenocarcinoma in C2. This has very interesting ramifications in radiology as well as in pathology. So, classically we used to say bronchoalveolar cancer can be defined as a peripheral neoplasm arising beyond a recognizable bronchus with a tendency to spread locally using the lung structure as the stroma which has been called as the lepidic spread. But this entire nomenclature of bronchoalveolar cancer has been changed in 2015. And today, Diksha with me would be talking about the pathological aspects and I will be talking about the radiological aspects. So, what exactly do you expect to see on a radiological image? So, multiple patterns are possible on a radiological image. You can have a single mass or a nodular form or it may look like a consolidation or you may have a multinodular form of bronchoalveolar cancer. Now, let us look at an image and how it looks like. Look at this X-ray chest. Can you see a single pulmonary nodule which is now seen on a CT like this? The key thing that you can see in this nodule is, can you see some this bubbly like appearance? Why? So this, this is uh, also called as pseudo cavitation. This is very typical of because the bronchi are patent, the airway are patent. So this is like an airspace uh, lesion where the airway are patent. So you are able to see the bubbly or lucencies, air lucencies within the lesion. That is called as pseudo cavitations. Very, very important to understand. So, it may look like a, a single lung nodule. It may have a bubbly or a pseudo cavitation appearance that you see in front of you. Or sometimes we see surrounding it a halo of ground grass appearance which can be seen in these lesions. Sometimes you may have a lesion. Again, look at another patient where you can see a bronchoalveolar uh, lesion here which is again uh, like a consolidative lesion with some airspace lesion with patent bronchus. Can you see the open bronchus here? And when we see the corresponding PET scan, CT PET image, what are we able to see in the PET scan? Low metabolic rate. This is very typical of this tumor. This tumor has a low metabolic rate on TB, on FDG PET. And of, on FDG PET, it is usually missed. Why? Because of low metabolic rate. Why? Because PET scan is based, the tumor should have a high metabolic rate. While this tumor has a low metabolic rate. Another radiological appearance of this tumor is it could look like a, just like a consolidative form. You can have a, diffu uh, uh, a whole consolidative area with, you know, lucencies within air bronchogram. So, this air bronchogram or open bronchus appearance is again very typical of bronchoalveolar cancer. And this is the reason why these patients would initially radiologically be misdiagnosed as pneumonia. Because uh, consolidation, air bronchogram, classically we would associate with pneumonia. And these patients will also pre present like a consolidation on a radiological image. Another thing that we have seen on radiology is, and I am sure Riksha would add on to the pathological correlation here is, that these lesions have, um, because of the mucinous content, right. so they have a very low attenuation on CT. So when we do a contrast enhanced CT, the vessels which have contrast inside, they actually stand out because the background is having low density, so it, they stand out. This has been called as the CT angiogram sign. This has been called as CT angiogram sign, which is again, initially it was thought to be very typical for bronchoalveolar cancer. Now we believe it to be slightly, you know, non-specific, but still it is one of the classic things that we should know about radiology of this tumor. Now I will hand over to Diksha to talk about the new changes that have come into this classification from 2015. Yeah, recently we've had lots of changes in lots of things. So one thing that has changed in lung adenocarcinoma is the classification. And this has become a very important PG exam topic also. So in front of you I have listed in front of you, I have listed the new terminologies that have come in this time. So lepidic pattern, micropapillary pattern invasive mucinous pattern, enteric pattern. In addition to that, we've come up with a new term called minimally invasive adenocarcinoma and a new entity called pre-invasive lesions. Now, in these pre-invasive lesions, we have two terms, atypical adenomatous hyperplasia and adenocarcinoma in situ, which is what previously we used to call bronchoalveolar carcinoma. And a Mucin, uh, minimally invasive adenocarcinoma and finally invasive adenocarcinoma. So what was previously called bronchoalveolar has now been changed 
and why have we changed it is because of its growth pattern so if we look at how we define adenocarcinoma in c2 now the definition says it should be less than or equal to 3 cm it has to be a solitary lesion and it has a pure lepidic growth it takes the support of the alveolar walls to grow but it does not cause any stromal invasion any vascular invasion or any pleural invasion and there will be no other histological type seen on it there will be no spread along air spaces through air spaces and non mucinous tends to be a little more than mucinous at the same time, there can be septal widening and slight sclerosis, but please remember no invasion at all. The new terminology of minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, which goes a step ahead of bronchoalveolar carcinoma or adenocarcinoma in C2, the size remains the same, that is less than or equal to 3 centimeters, but a minute component of invasion comes in, and that component should not be more than 0.5 centimeters or 5 millimeter. If it crosses that, it becomes a frank invasive adenocarcinoma. So the basic difference here is in the size. We are becoming more stringent with the measurement. And the invasive component that you see here, that should be around 5 millimeter, should not be lepidic, it should be something else. Again, non mucinous is a little more. And here again, since it's minimally invasive, there is no lymphatic, no vascular, no pleural inv invasion, no necrosis, and no spread along air spaces. Out of these two, one terminology that you should remember is adenocarcinoma in C2 because it has changed our definition. Now, in front of you, you see a beautiful photograph. The upper half shows you the normal lung. You can see the alveolar spaces. And now compare it with the lower half. Along the alveolar spaces, you can see these bubbly, big, big cells, which are which have eosinophilic cytoplasm, and it, they are growing along the alveolar walls. Now, in between these spaces, we can get mucinous appearance, which is which is what we saw radiologically also. And this pattern is called the lepidic pattern, and it's also called butterflies sitting on a fence. If you can imagine butterflies with their wings open sitting on a fence, it's supposed to look like that. So, is, is this one the butterfly? The tumor cell is the butterfly, this, this yes. The butterfly. And right. the alveolar right. wall becomes the fence. Yeah. Very so imaginative. So, it's actually very great to know the other side as a radiologist because we, we need to, you know, actually, we, we see a lot of radiology, but when we see it on a slide, it's actually eye opening. And it's, it's when, very you, multicolored. when you look at this, we can imagine those uh, spaces, air spaces that we were seeing on radiology yes, yes, also. Yes. So, good correlation between the two. So, new terminology, bronchoalveolar carcinoma is now adenocarcinoma in C2. Lebitic growth pattern is the important thing to remember. Keyword, yeah. keyword to remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, th this was our attempt to, you know, uh, to use our medium of YouTube to actually look at you know, um, a new terminology which has come up in 2015 and we have tried to look at the term from its radiological as well as from a pathological perspective. And this is what we try to do in this radiopath series. It is my firm belief that the integrated medicine is the key thing to move forward. We have to look at medicine as a whole instead of looking at each subject separately. You have to learn that, okay, it's all interlinked. Mm -hmm. Once you start seeing the unity in it, you become a good doctor and if you are a good doctor, you actually score good in the exams as well. That is our message through this medium. If you like this video, please feel free to write to me or Diksha about the feedback and we will try to make more such videos. Please follow us on Dam's Daily channel on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you.